Well, here we are on day two of Completing Square. I know the excitement is building. So let's do this. We're going to start off with a problem just reviewing the process of completing the square. So you notice I have a quadratic equation here. And along the margin here, I have all the steps for completing the square. So we're going to put the steps in the correct order and kind of talk it through. So, first of all, I'm given this quadratic equation, and we know that the first step of and to have it written in the form x squared plus bx equals c. Or in other words, we want all the variables on one side equal to a constant. So that means this plus 4 here is to the other side. So we need to subtract 4 from both sides. So I look at my strips. Which one would it be? Ah, here is it. So it's x squared minus 12x now equals negative 4. Great. Now, the next step is we have to make this quadratic equation into a perfect square. So we know that we take the coefficient of the linear term, negative 12, and we divide it by 2 because we want even dimensions on both sides on the two sides of the square. So negative 12 divided by 2. And then to fill in that gap, remember, we square it. So another way of writing this is we're going to add a negative 6 squared to both sides. So which strip here adds a negative 6 squared? This big long one, huh? OK. So you can see I added a negative 6 squared, and I added a negative 6 squared. So now I have created a perfect square. So since I have a perfect square, I can now write this in perfect square form. Quantity squared equal to a constant. Where is it? Here it is. x minus 6 squared equals 32. And now we just proceed with solving for x. So we would take the square root of both sides. And we know the square root of the quantity x minus 6 squared is the absolute value of x minus 6 equal to square root of 32. Now, our goal is to, un to get x by itself, so I will undo the absolute value signs. So then that means then I will have x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus radical 32. Now look at that radical 32. Do you remember from last chapter how that can be simplified? Because we know that there is a factor of 32 that is a perfect square, 16. So it would become 4 radical 2. So here we go. We now have x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus 4 radical 2. And then we add 6 to both sides, and now we have the solution to this crazy quadratic equation. Okay, so let us now write these steps in our sequence chain. So please title your sequence chain, Completing the Square. And let's write this out. So we are always given a problem. In this example, it was x squared minus... 12x plus 4 equals 0. OK, so this is our given. Now, the first step is we want to rewrite the equation in the form x squared plus bx is equal to c. So basically, what we want here is we want to have 1x squared. So see how this is a 1x squared. And then plus the bx. And then that is always equal to our constant. OK? So in this problem, we subtracted 4 from both sides. x squared minus 12x equals a negative 4. OK? Second step, now we must complete the square. So we are going to rewrite this quadratic equation as a perfect square. And we know we would take the coefficient of the linear term, which is b, divided by 2, and square it. Once we have completed the square, we add this number to both sides. Add this number to both sides of the equation. OK. I'm running out of room on this line, huh? OK. So what we are going to do, so it is a negative 12. So negative 12 divided by 2 squared. Or in other words, we're going to add a negative 6 squared to both sides. So it becomes x squared minus 12x add a negative 6 squared is equal to a negative 4. I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to erase this and make more space. OK. Negative 4 plus the quantity negative 6 squared. 
Phew! We have just completed the square. So what we will do now is we will write in write the equation. I should make that a little bit more proper there. Write the equation in perfect square form. Okay, perfect square form. Now we know that perfect square form is a quantity squared equal to a constant. Basically what we're doing is we're factoring this left side. So it's going to be x squared minus 6, the quantity x minus 6 squared, and then negative 4 plus 36 is 32. Okay, now we will solve for x. And this is what we've been practicing for a while now. We take the square root of both sides, so we get the absolute value of x minus 6 is equal to the square root of 32. Well, when we solve for x, we want to undo the absolute value, which is plus or minus radical 32. And we can see that radical 32 needs to be simplified, which we did over on the other page, and that became 4 radical 2. And so our final result would be 6 plus or minus 4 radical 2. Shoo! Oh, you hear my phone? I got a text. Okay, moving right along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the steps here to the page. There's the pin. And we're going to scroll on over. Whoops, here we go. Scroll over. Scroll over. Okay, and now let's do this problem together. So you can see I have the steps written just succinctly right there. So first thing, we must um, have it written in x squared plus bx form. And so we're going to add 307 to both sides, which is 300, um, add 307 plus 8, what, 315? I hope so. Okay, and now we're going to complete the square. So I'm going to take the negative 6 and divide it by 2 and then square that number. Or another way to write it is negative 3 squared. Now notice how I always leave it as negative 3 squared instead of 9. I do that on purpose, so I'm adding a negative 3 squared. The reason why I do that is that it's much easier to factor the left side now because look at how clear this is. It's a z squared and then a minus 3 squared. See, isn't that nice? And this is 315 plus 9. So now I have the quantity z minus 3 squared equals 324. So I will take the square root of both sides, okay, and now I have the absolute value of z minus 3 Oh boy, 324, that's an awfully big number. And you know, I kind of know this already. I don't expect you to know this one, but that is 18. Okay, that's from doing a lot of math all the time. Okay, so we undo the absolute value, so I get z minus 3 equals plus or minus 18. And now I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Now, since 3 and 18 are rational numbers, I'm going to go ahead and add and subtract these two numbers. Oh boy, someone wants me pretty badly here. The text keeps going off. So one solution is 21, and then the other solution will be a negative 15. Woohoo! We just solved that quadratic equation. Now, do you remember from the lesson before? These numbers will be the x-intercepts of my graph. Okay, that was bonus. Okay, 2b squared plus 16b equals 4. Let's do this thing. Well, if you notice, the first step is we want to have the variables on one side and the constant on the other. Well, that is done. Notice variables and a constant. However, did you notice it's 2b squared? And remember when we did those algebra tiles? It was always a 1x squared that was the foundation. Remember that? So we must divide everything by 2 so that we always have the coefficient of the quadratic term to be a 1. Now I'm allowed to divide everything by 2 due to the division property of equality. Great. We've done the first step. Now the next step. What number must I add in order to complete the square? Well, I take the 8 and divide it by 2 and then square that number, which is 4 squared. So I'm going to add 4 squared to both sides. Now again, I always just leave it as 4 squared because it makes this next step where I must factor so much easier. So it's going to be b plus 4 squared. And then 2 plus 16 is 18. Now solve 
Now notice this solving part's gotten pretty easy, hasn't it? So I get the absolute value of b plus 4 is equal to the square root of 18. Okay, we undo the absolute value, so we get b plus 4 equals plus or minus, oh boy, that 18, I'm thinking squared of 9 times squared of 2. Weren't you thinking that too? I thought so. So I have 3 squared of 2. So when I isolate b, I have negative 4 plus or minus 3 radical 2. Wow. Whew. My mouth is getting dry from talking so much here. Well, I think this is our last one we'll do together. And so, again, let's just follow our steps. First of all, we have to get it in the form x squared plus bx equals c. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I get 6. Now, we have to take the coefficient of this linear term and divide it by 2. Oh, I know I did this problem. Because negative 7 divided by 2, is that a whole number? I know, Ms. Kleiber. Well, you know what? Fractions are our friends, too. So let's just leave it as negative 7 over 2, and then we square that. So this is the number we'll add to both sides. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. You're going to be just fine. So we're going to add a negative 7 half squared to both sides. Whoops, that's not a plus sign. There should be an equal sign. Equal. 6, adding a negative 7 half squared to both sides. Okay, now we'll go to step three and we'll factor. So we have c minus 7 halves squared. Okay, we've got to do a little math over here. Negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. 2 times 2 is 4. Oops, not. I wrote 4, I said 4, and wrote 2. Okay, okay, let's add this fractions. Well, we know 6 fourths. 6 is 24 fourths, right? And we add it to 49 fourths. So we end up with, let's see, 9 plus 4 is 13, carry the 1. So we get 73 fourths is c minus 7 halves squared. Now you notice, when things get mixed up a little bit, I just keep following the process. So now I'll take the square root of both sides. So I get the absolute value of c minus 7 halves. Don't panic, it's all going to be good. Now squared is 73 over 4. The numerator, 73. Hmm, is that a perfect square? I don't think so. I can't even think of a number that goes into 73. I know 9 times 7 is 63. <laughs> 7 plus 3 is 10, so that means 3 doesn't go into it. You know what? I think 73 is a prime number. Now, what is the square root of 4? Well, that is 2. Okay, let's just keep plugging along. So now we undo the absolute value. So I have c minus 7 halves equals plus or minus radical 73 all over 2. And now we're going to add 7 halves to both sides. So 7 halves plus or minus radical 73 all over 2. Woo -hoo! We are done. Now, you can write this as a one fraction because the denominators are the same. So I get 7 plus or minus radical 73 all over 2. Okay? I think we're done. Because, yep, the rest of the problems are what we do in class as practice. So good luck with your homework. Remember, look at the examples and your sequence chain.